Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So today we are in my Tesla Model 3 and we're gonna test the Tesla Supercharger charging and then we're gonna switch over to our ID4 and see what it's like to, and what the differences are in charging on Electrify America on the CCS uh, DC fast charging. So stick with us and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so in order to find the nearest supercharger, we press the charge button up here you see we're in the southeastern portion of Cincinnati, but we want to go to the west side to this supercharger. And once you click on it, it'll tell you that there's one that's out of order, 2A. There are 12 stalls total, and this is how busy it is. It's, when it thinks we'll get there, it's not very uh, busy at all. And the price is right here at 39 cents per kilowatt hour. And I can save it as a favorite if I like. It's the distance away. And then there's also photos so you can see what's around this is in a Meyer parking lot which is a 24-hour uh, sort of all-purpose grocery store so to speak so if we want to go there press the go button okay and it's already preconditioning uh, the battery for fast charging that's really important because that's going to get the battery to the to the temperature that it needs in order to be able to um, charge quickly so when it gets there we'll have 33 percent let's go Here we are at the Meyer. Let me show you how easy this is. And it turns green. Just a few seconds. There you have it. So we are on 3B, and since this is a version two a supercharger, you wouldn't want to share uh, with 3A, because it would be 150 here, this would be 150 here, until someone plugs in, then it would be 75 uh, kilowatts each. That's really the only thing to be concerned about. And the version three superchargers, they are uh, thinner. So this is pretty thick cords. It's really the only way to tell the difference is thin at versus Thick. So yeah, here we are. This looks like a 10 stall and a Meyer. Everything you need. And here we are back in the car. It's telling us here we have 20 minutes to go until we get to 80%. We're charging at 116 kilowatts. We're at 36 kilowatts. My car can do about 150 a kilowatts uh, peak if it's at a very low state of charge uh, and then it's showing you the cost here um, so far we're at a dollar we brought it. i think this is pretty new actually i haven't seen this the last time we supercharged the best thing about a tesla or one of the best things is the the app and you could see here that it shows the percentage and how much time we have. It will also notify you in the app that your charge is just about complete, that you know how much time you need to charge to get your next stop. Or in this case, we have it set to 80%. So it's showing that we need um, the time we need to finish. It will also uh, ask you to rate the charge once, once you're finished. That's a newer feature uh, that I appreciate. And you can send pictures uh, as well, letting Tesla know if you had any trouble with your session. Hi there. 
welcome to our Volkswagen ID4. We're going to look at how we find uh, charging stations uh, in this car. So let's look at the screen. So we are down here in the southeastern portion of Cincinnati. I know there's a Electrify America right here, but at this uh, zoom level, it won't show me. So I have to zoom in and then finally I see it there. So I can touch it. It's green, so it says it's available. It says 10 available right now. That's pretty cool. Do start. The destination is on a limited access road. Please make a U-turn now. And then we can go over here and it will show us uh, what our arrival percentage will be. 25%, so we have 33% now. So it does have on route uh, planning, but it does not have preconditioning and what how that matters um, and how and that's different from Tesla but the reason that's important is this charging will not be as fast as it could be so therefore you will be slower at the charger it's particularly important on cold days that's a downside and I actually think that uh, VW is going to fix this uh, in the next year's model but it would be a, a welcome thing so let's take off and uh, see what our percentage is when we arrive Okay, you choose the app, Electrify America. Comes up with this cool graphic. Okay, Harper Station. This app is pretty cool because you can see in advance which um, stalls are available and their capacity. You can see the one we're at, number six, is uh, derated to 50 uh, kilowatts. We're not in a hurry, that's fine, but if you were, you would want to make sure you chose another one, like number eight at uh, 350. Okay, sorry for the wind. We moved to number eight. So I'm gonna pull out this for the CCS. There is a space to put it right there. You can tell how often I do this. And then I'm gonna go around here. And then this is number eight, the charger says right there. Plug in. This is not easy to do one-handed, as it turns out. Okay, it turns green. We're charging. And there we go. Communicating. This is real time, folks. This is what's called the handshake when the car communicates with the charger. Red. That's great. Charge start error. All right, let's unplug it. Plug it back in. Okay. Try it this time. Okay, here we are. Attempt number three to charge our car. Let's see what this says. So one says it's available. Oh, there we go. All right, plugged in. My faithful assistant. Starting number seven here. It's like so. All right, let's see what happens. Now, 
you find us at the Electrify America at Harper's uh, Point and on 275 on the east side of Cincinnati where I had three attempts before I was able to successfully charge. It seemed like the app wasn't working uh, well. We tried the pay NFC with like Apple Pay where you can tap to pay and that didn't, didn't work. So we've had a lot of uh, trouble. And I will say though, in fairness, we traveled to, from Ohio to Colorado and never had an issue uh, except for maybe a cracked handle or throttling, but we never really, or derating, we never really had, um, you know, uh, Electrify America station that did not start. So, but this was, uh, you know, it's cold out, the wind's blowing, it's raining, and we had to move uh, twice and try, uh, this is our third attempt, uh, actually probably fourth, because I had to try this one twice. So uh, we were able to get it, we're charging at 95 kilowatts, um, which is great, but I can imagine that this would be a scary thing if you're out here in the middle of a parking lot and not have a, the charging uh, work. But again, this has not been our experience up until now. So Tesla is like Apple. They make the cars, they make the chargers, they make all the software that makes it all work. And so what you've seen in this video is an example of an integrated system with Tesla and with a sort of outsourced um, system with Electrify America. We thought about redoing the Electrify America video to see if we could do it better, but then I thought better of it because while that's not typically been our experience, that was our experience last night. So we left it in. But the difference is stark. It's easy to understand why at this point, almost all of EV manufacturers have committed to going to the North American charging standard or the Tesla standard. This video isn't to pick on CCS or Electrify America, but the reality is it has a long way to go. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like and also subscribe to see what we get into next. And here's a link to a video of a road trip that might tell you what it's like to travel across the country using Electrify America and CCS. Have a good one.